say good morning, Thurman. Good morning, Thurman. My name is... My name is Thurman Statham. <laughs> Thurman is a great artist. He works very well with our pre-K kids. He has fun with them, and he just tries to teach their culture, because a lot of our kids don't know the Native American culture. Our class is part of the NICE program in the Omaha Public Schools. NICE stands for Native Indigenous Centered Education. Every child in our pre-K classroom has some measure of Native blood in them. This program is very important because Native Americans are still suffering the effects of some of the issues that came after the boarding school experience and help students reconnect to who they are. <laughs> My grandma and grandpa, when they got sent off to schools, they weren't allowed to speak their language. Their hair was all cut off. Just cruel stuff. Does anyone know how to draw a buffalo? I'm hoping what they learned, just the idea that the education reinforces family as opposed to separating family that every Native American parent today is concerned about. I feel part advocate and I feel part artist. I think that teaching is the highest form of advocacy you could do in terms of influencing the world or having a chance to be a part of something that you can change. Okay. Not too thick. See, I make the... I evolve towards teaching. Dry, like, you can touch the as part of a process to give what I do more meaning. I think I describe myself as a painter, sculptor, craftsperson. When I went to school, there were lots of debates about art and craft, and particularly in the glass field. I guess some of the objects are... They're almost like canvases, three-dimensional canvases. Generally, within the studio, there's as many as 20 pieces that are being worked on. I just like exploring, and I made a commitment to the fine arts because I could explore. I can write. I can be a poet. I can listen to that poetry and translate that poetry into a visual object on my own terms. Ultimately, all of it has to do with some form of communication. And I get to explore that, and there's a certain responsibility that comes with that. I'm creating an outdoor classroom. The huge part of Native American philosophy is to be outdoors. What we're gonna do is turn this medicine wheel and expand it sort of into a seating element and make it into a bench. The actual stone will stay there, but the center stones won't. And there'll be four segments that, that um, so that you'd actually be able to walk in from here and then sit down here. The medicine wheel for Native Americans is a healing place, is a place where they bring um, stresses and pains in their lives to the circle to be healed. And community members come and share stories about their history for the first time in the school system. We're gonna get this clay and you're gonna press your hands into it and then we're gonna have a shape. Mm -hmm. When a bear walks in the mud. Mm -hmm. No, it pushes. And then what we're gonna do is guess what I'm gonna do with this shape? I'm gonna pour a hot glass in here and it's gonna turn really hard. And those get put into the top of the bench and it gets ground to a polish. So they'll be able to see all their hands floating a pattern throughout the bench. What I'm hoping to instill is a true Native American resource through a more experiential point of view. We're working with materials. 
is a whole different language. These kids have never put their hands in clay. And then, you know, come springtime, they're gonna see it in glass and they can find their hands. For her little hands to be on the wheel and other little kids' hands on the wheel, I think is really good because it's always a connection tied there. She's using her hands to balance, so you can put your hands on. The kids the wheel, have right? a better sense of place and they have fun and they're in a school that's better than what happened 30 years ago where they were, their hair was cut off and they were separated from their family. And by the time we're done with the medicine wheel, the kids will have a connection to an educational institution that will, it will change their point of view of what happens when they go to school. And all those sensibilities come from my involvement with the crafts. There's a core connection of craft that connects to our inner being. And with every craft medium, there's sort of a hidden language. It's odd what parts do work as opposed to that don't work, because there's such an abstraction of the objects themselves. Bessie was the first female black aviator. I'm going to probably define who she was in the piece with the title. And part of what I'm going to be doing is exploring advocacy through titles. Like I could call this, they don't allow black women to do that. You know, I'm sort of a cultural mutt. I've got, I think, a little bit of everybody in me. I'm born Afro-American. I was raised in a white Jewish neighborhood. When I get involved with other cultures, I have tools that not many people have. You gotta go up. Thurman's probably one of the greatest mentors I ever met in my life. He never gives up. Stain it. I had never had much experience with art until I met Thurman. I mean, I. I always think I had it in me, but, you know, I just, nobody really pushed it out of me except Thurman, I'll tell you that. And just do the whole thing all the way around like that, huh? Ty is training to be sort of a long-term assistant. It's great because he's tall and strong with incredible resources that he has within himself that he doesn't know about. I was born in South Sudan. Uh, we lived there for seven years, moved to Ethiopia. From Ethiopia, we, we moved on to Memphis, Tennessee, USA. From Tennessee, we moved into Omaha, Nebraska. So we've been here now for 15 years. Omaha has the largest Sudanese refugee community outside of Sudan. And once I became aware of it, I had an interest in what happens to displaced populations, particularly of something so recent. I thought, how do you help these groups become successful? How can their cultural heritage enrich ours? We're the new face of what makes America special. We're the new form of immigrants, you know, and America has always been refreshed, you know, by just a, a fresh wave of new ideas, you know, new way of doing things, new way of seeing the world. And I, I can clearly see that within our community. Hi, I'm Thurman. Hi, I'm Natalia. Hi, With Thurman, yeah, it's all been about Carter. educating. Hi, I'm Thurman. Hi. Thanks for coming. Marilee. Not just the kids, but the teachers. How do we get the teachers to understand the African culture and some of the things that are going on with their Sudanese students? Of How do we create those opportunities for kids from different communities to be in one place where they can actually interact with each other? You just walked into what I call a free zone. And by that, I mean that that at this point, everything that you think you can't do, you can do. And so the students here are from North High School, and some of them are connected through an organization called Communities and Schools, which is a dropout prevention program. And Communities and Schools is a program really focused on finding the resources to help students stay in school and graduate. Each of us is going to be given a box. To, as, a, as an item to work on. You can finish it here or you can finish it at home. Their sandblasted surface is obviously as texture, huh? You can draw on it just like a... You, yes, you can. 
I think they've always think that things have to look absolutely perfect. How many feel like that, for real? <laughs> no way. You gotta be kidding me. So serious. So serious. Y'all that serious? Yes. Yeah. Then why do you think everything has to be perfect? Because, because perfection is key. It's perfection is key. Like if you don't That's have perfection, then you don't have nothing. So this is so... Cool. It's so prevalent. Right. You actually can't mess up because the worst thing that could happen is in the process of messing up, you actually learn and you refine your aesthetics of what that is. At this point, you should cut loose and just discover how big you are and just, just go for it. They are totally amazed about having this opportunity to kind of work with him and to get his knowledge. It inspires me because I see what it can do for them later on in school. So right now it's opaque, right? Look what happens when I've seen students find a talent that they didn't realize they had and all of a sudden they realize that they can do something with their lives. Even if they're not gonna be artists down the line, these kids are, they're, they're gonna benefit from it. You know, with the Sudanese community, a success will be the Afro-American kids working with the Sudanese kids and communicating with each other in dealing with the beauty of their differences. Another will be just the exposure to the fact that you can be expressive and that you have a right to be expressive. We have a colored person in the background because it's always a colored person in the background. And white people in front, man, they always come first and sees us different. The subject is pretty provocative about white in front of black or Mexican. And, and another success is the kids just having fun and making things and feeling whole. Get to the end, get to the end, go to the end. Gotcha, it's on you. Right. Blow, blow on it. Blow, 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 Keep going. Huh? She's got good hands. Huh? It's one thing to be in a place like America and pursue the American dream and live a beautiful life. But it's another thing to have a purpose, you know, to change lives, you know, and to be able to, to actually make a difference and add meaning to people's lives. And that's what Thurman does every day. See the shape? Look at the shape, huh? This is their first time doing it. It's a pretty nice shape. It's a pretty sculptural shape. Huh? We're not worried about messing it up, right? Huh? And look what we discovered, huh? Excellent, excellent job.